Hey there, race fans. It's Race Day Top 5 with me, Frank Five. All-Star Night, where the stars shine, the money's on the line, and the drivers elbow it out for 100 laps in the Lone Star State at Texas Motor Speedway. Swapping it up now, it seems like we're going for All-Star Race from Charlotte. We did it to Bristol last year, do it to Texas this year. Might as well make this a traveling event. And I gotta say, for a race at Texas Motor Speedway where... It's been suspect racing over the last couple years since the repave. This was a pretty good all-star weekend, to say the least. But one thing's for certain. You cannot stop Kyle Larson right now. That dude is unbelievable. Let's get into the all-star festivities. Number one, Kyle Larson. The man that just simply won't stop winning right now. He has just been dominant, dominant, dominant. Captured. Last night's 2021 NASCAR All-Star Race at Texas Motor Speedway winning over Brad Keselowski, Chase Elliott, Joey Logano, and Ryan Blaney. Kyle Larson has just been, again, he's been on a roll lately, folks. I mean, he started out the year, won at Las Vegas, and then the last two race weekends, on points weekends, he dominated the Coast 600, ran really strong at Sonoma, won both of those events, and, to that, and last night he captured his second All-Star victory, cashing in $1.1 million. <laughs> Must feel good to feel really rich, doesn't it, Larson? This is his second All-Star victory after he won it for Chip Ganassi in 2019. After he got voted in, or I think he got voted in by the fans, or he raced his way in. He raced his way in. He raced his way in in 2019. I have to remember that. He raced his way in in 2019, won the All-Star race. Didn't participate last year, obviously, because of his suspension from NASCAR. And is firing from Chip Ganassi Racing. And this year at Hendrick, last night, he put together an absolute solid performance. Wasn't technically, the, he was the best car in the first round of the race. But then he got back into traffic and, you know, kind of wondered, as good as Larson is, will he be able to fight his way back to the front? Lo and behold, he did with that speed of that Hendrick car. And his other teammates were running really strong once again. Uh, he put himself in the right position on one of the last restart to begin the final round of the race. Round six, a 10-lap shootout. Larson got a was battling side by side with teammate Chase Elliott for the lead. Brian Kozlowski in the two car was closing, but Larson got the better run off of turn four with about uh, a lot, uh, nine or eight laps to go in that round. And just, he was clear from the field, but Brian Kozlowski was trying to put pressure on the end, but he didn't have help from behind with the 550 horsepower package to at least try to get a little suck up to the five car to try to maybe make a run, make a pass the inside, move to the outside, or bump him out of the way. Because, heck, wouldn't you want to wreck somebody in front of you to win a million dollars? I mean, I I would have if I was in a race car driver, but I'm a fair race car, but I'm a fair um, driver when it comes to the regular road, so I won't, I won't do that. But Larson put it together last night, won a million dollars. I mean, the comeback is especially over for Larson. He's shown up for Hendrick Motorsports and in NASCAR in general. We've seen how good he was at Ganassi, but he's shown up now with Hendrick. I mean, it's going to be really tough to stop Kyle Larson these next couple of races. It's going to be tough to stop the rest of the year, especially the way that those Hendrick cars are running. So Larson did a phenomenal job last night, ran pretty much up towards the front and had the best average finish uh, leading into the fifth round, the 30-lap segment, where he put himself in position up towards the front and stayed there for the rest of the race and put himself in great position with a nice battle on that last restart of the race to get him his second All-Star victory. Number two, Brad Keselowski is Penske number four, comes home with a second place finish. He is a driver like Martin, a Martin Truex Jr. that has n not won the all-star race, yet they're a NASCAR Cup Series champion. That's hard to believe, isn't it? And Brad Keselowski's getting up there in age. He had a relatively good race car last night. He was up at the front, then he fell back, and then he picked his way back to the front. He caught a lucky break in the middle of the fifth round. When Ross Chastain went around for a spin, Brad Keselowski was able to take the lead when the field was frozen under yellow because he had yet to pit. So he cycled in front of Chase Elliott. He lost a couple of positions on the race start to end the fifth round, but then he put himself in position in the last round to have a shot at Kyle Larson. But he didn't get around. He didn't have help from behind. But nonetheless, it was a good performance by the two car. He did say in his posters interview, those Hendrick cars are stupid fast right now. Boy, are they. I mean... I know the Penske cars are still championship favorites, but from Brad's comments, they have some work to do if they're going to compete with these Hendrick cars. I think everybody, Gibbs, Stuart Haas, basically with Calvin Harvick carrying the banner, the Ganassi guys, the Richard Childers guys, uh, the Roush cars, I mean, everybody, they really got to step up their program if they're going to compete with Hendrick at this rate. Hendrick might as well win the rest of the season, to be honest with you. But the two car, nonetheless, had a great performance last night. 
Number three will be driver recap by Chase Elliott. Um, nice performance last night. Um, Elliott's not really been good at Texas Motor Speedway since they repaved the track. He's had some top tens, but he and he's had some laps, but he hadn't really been a winning car. He was relatively a good top five winning car last night. He ran up front in the first round. When the field was inverted, he was stuck in the mid-pack, went far his way to the top ten, inverted again, back to the front, in the middle of the pack, and then battled, put himself in position on the lead on the last restart of round five and won that fifth round. And it looked like LA was going to be the first back-to-back -back winner for all-star, for winning back-to-back all-star races. He was the defending winner of the all-star race. And on another note, his crew won the $100,000 pit crew challenge whoever had the fastest pits up in the fifth round was going to get 100k and Elliot's team got the job done and on that last restart I felt like we had it but Larson got the better of us but, you know third place I know it doesn't matter first place you get all the money and all the glory but still it was a good result for the nine car and I think it learned something for him um, he, he took something away from this race to help him for the fall because when we come back here in the fall this is going to be a playoff race it's the round of eight and of those three races in that round, the only tracks I feel comfortable for Elliott are Kansas and Martinsville, obviously. Uh, Texas, he just hasn't had a grip on. He did run the truck race on Saturday to help him prepare. He led some laps for GMS Racing's 24 entry, but finished second to John Hunter Nemechek. I felt like Elliott took something away from that truck race and it materialized to the cup race last night. He was relatively competitive. He could pass guys. He fell back, picked it back up. He had a good race car. Can this carry over to if he's in the round of eight in the fall? Unless if he already wins a race early on and has the bonus points, then it may not be needed. But who knows? We're not there yet. We haven't started the playoffs yet. We're still got a long ways to go until the end of August. Sermon, who's going to be in the playoffs, who's not. But nonetheless, nine car, great performance last night. Number four, the different types of rules for this also race. I are all over the place, folks. So we started off obviously with the running order of the field. We started off with the drivers that made it in, that were in based off wins from former All Star winners, former NASCAR champions, drivers that have won this year, drivers that have won last year. And then we added the four other drivers that made it in via the open. They were, um, trying to think, Ross Chastain, who had to start at the rear for the All Star Open because of a uh, failing pre-race inspection as Crucci was sent out of the racetrack and sent home. Tyler Reddick driving for Richard Turtles Racing. Eric Almirola made the all-star made the all-star race after winning the open. <laughs> that dude really made some luck this year. Really did. Uh, good performance by him. And he finished in the top 10 in the all-star race. Good job, Almirola. Let's hope that carries some momentum for the team the rest of the year. And Matt Benedetto got in via the fan vote. And I kind of figured he was going to be the guy to win. The fan vote. If he had won one of those segments, then I think Bubba Wallace would have won the, the the fan vote by the fans. But instead, it's Matty D. He got in. He had a pretty subpar all-star race. Uh, the field was set by the order uh, from 1st to 21st. Uh, and then the field was inverted positions 1 through 12 were flipped. So if you finished 12th at the end of round 1, you would be flipped up to the front by vote of the fans. Then the whole field was inverted in round 4 which was very interesting. We took some of the cars that ran in the back the majority of the race, like a Ryan Newman, a Michael McDowell, and Eric Amarola and a Tyler Reddick, put themselves up towards the front while some of the guys have been up front all night. Larson, Elliott, Kyle Busch, Logano, Blaney, Kozlowski, William Byron, Alex Bowman, they had to fight their way back to the front. And most of those guys did. Some of those guys didn't. Um, and then, of course, the fifth round guys pitted early on in the round, like pitted literally after we just started the fifth round, guys started hitting pit road. The Hendrick car stayed out there. The pace they set literally beat those guys that decided to pit early. I think those guys that pit early thought, we could get up front and get our track position. But unfortunately, the Hendrick cars just turned up, the, turned up the juice and just put together consistent fast laps, outperforming those guys that had pitted. So regardless of what those guys did, it didn't help them whatsoever the Hendrick cars were just too fast uh and then of course the final round was set by the order of the finishing of the finishers from the fifth round and it's pretty complex you know we don't want to make it the same format every all-star race every year we want to change things up I thought this was very interesting I mean people may argue that maybe the whole invert thing was a little bit confusing um I mean things can be a little confusing but again we want to change things up we don't want to have the same thing over and over and over because this is the all-star race this is a race for fun a race to try to get a million dollars we want to make it fun we want to change things up and i felt like they did a good job of it last night and number five the racing in general i thought it was really good 
I mean, everybody craps on the 550 horsepower package. You know, next year with the next gen car, the mile and a half and two mile tracks uh, that have been pretty subpar or below average in racing might be more competitive next year. Time will tell. But I will say for Texas Motor Speedway, a track that's really tough to even run side by side to battle for the lead because. Turns one and two have less banking than they do in three and four. They flattened out one and two for the repave in 2017. And if you get up in the high groove, you're going to spin out, get loose, and hit the wall. Um, a couple of guys um, did that in the truck race. The cup guys, not so much. They Some spawned, but they didn't crash. Three and four in the All-Star Open, though, there was a crash with Eric Jones and Daniel Suarez. But regardless, I felt like everybody, you know, kept it close and competitive the entire race. The racing that you could pass for the lead with the package... At, uh, here in Texas, under the lights, as you know, the sun was going down. I felt like it was a very entertaining race. It was a good race for Texas Motor Speedway because, again, the racing has been questionable. Ever since the repave, the racing has just been kind of not so good or just pretty much boring. I will say, though, last summer's Texas race, which we had because COVID pushed it back, was a relatively good race. I thought it was a relatively good race. And this year's All-Star Race at Texas... Uh, for Eddie Gossage, who's now the former president of Texas Motor Speedway, last night was his last um, race as the president of the Speedway before he turns it over to the next man in charge, who I forget who it is. Job well done. The stage for the All-Star Race was incredible. Uh, the intensity, like the fans sitting out. It was a hot day yesterday. It was in the upper 90s. The track temp was almost 150 degrees. And all the fans agreed. Great crowd for Texas Motor Speedway. Stuck it out to come see their favorite drivers bow out for a million dollars or try to get in the All-Star Race to compete for that million dollars. Good job. Oh, and by the way, Sammy Hagar, former lead singer of Van Halen and solo artist performing his famous hit, I Can't Drive 55, on the pace laps right before the start of the race, the green flag dropped. That was awesome. I mean, I like, I love, I'm a, I'm a Van Halen fan, folks. Rest in peace, Eddie Van Halen. Uh, and to see one of the former singers sing one of his classic hits, I Can't Drive 55, perform before the race, that was really cool. And the fans were into it, just rocking out with a great rock and roll legend that is Sammy Hagar, a Hall of Famer. That was pretty cool. I will say, I applaud the whole, like the racing, the setting, everything in Texas World Speedway for the All-Star Race. Good job. Good job, Texas. You made this weekend for racing and the whole atmosphere very fun. And hopefully, we have a packed house here for the fall race later this year. Also, I want to make note that last night was the final broadcast for the NASCAR on Fox crew for the Cup Series this season. They're, Fox is not done with NASCAR yet. They'll still have Race Hub, and they'll still do the truck coverage. But as far as Xfinity and Cup Series, they're done for the year. So Mike Joy, Jeff Gordon, Clint Bohr, your first year, did a really good job. And can't wait to see what you do again next year. Larry McReynolds, Jamie Little, Vince Welch. Regan Smith, Shannon Spake, Jamie McMurray, and Chris Myers back on the pre-race festivities. Good job to everybody and all the people behind the scenes that make it happen. Uh, Richie Zions, Artie Kepner, uh, all the folks that make NASCAR and Fox possible. Thank you guys for an incredible season, what they deemed the best season ever. I gotta say, it was the best season ever for Fox with a lot of Interesting things. A surprise winner to start up the season for NASCAR and Fox coverage with Michael McDowell winning the Daytona 500. Uh, Christopher Bell getting his first career win at the Daytona Road Course. Kyle Larson winning in his comeback to NASCAR. Basically, call it, no, can't call it a comeback anymore. Relatively solid racing. Battling, racing in Martinsville under the lights and then battling it out in the, you know, the sun the next day after the rain out. Relatively good competitive racing. Talladega, a lot of fun. Coda's first ever NASCAR Cup race. Very good job despite running in the rain. Very interesting, exciting racing. Coca-Cola 600 this year, the first race that reduced, eliminated restrictions for fan capacity. And the rest of the season, most of the tracks will have full capacity, which is music to my ears. A couple of tracks like Watkins Glen need to probably start thinking about that. And if not, just have limited fans regardless, because we need, we're starting to get things back, folks. We saw a lot of it this year. We see guys like those normal performers, Kyle Busch, Whittigan, Logano, Blaney, Keselowski, Truex, Elliott, um, again, Larson, Byron, Bowman, all the contenders running up front, bowing it out. 
True, a couple of other drivers have yet to win. Denny Hamlin, Kevin Harvick, Kurt Busch, Matt Benedetto, and even Austin Dillon as well. Uh, they have to get win soon because the clock's ticking, and we've got 10 races left in the regular season. So, NASCAR Fox, thank you guys so much for the season. And now, it's Dale Jr., Rick Allen, Steve Letarte, Jeff Burton, and the rest of the NBC crew to get their season on this upcoming weekend as NASCAR returns to Nashville for the first time in 10 years. We'll be racing at Nashville Super Speedway, the first appearance for the Cup Series, the first appearance for the Xfinity Series and Truck Series in 10 years since 2011. So we will see who's going to come out on top, who's going to shine in the state and the city that is big for country music and everything. Cannot wait to see how NBC carries us for the rest of the season from the green flight this upcoming Sunday in Nashville to the checkers in the desert of Phoenix, Arizona in November. So we will see what happens. Will Larson continue on the momentum? Will the Hendrick car still continue their strong run this season? Will Kevin Harvick push to get a win? Will Denny Hamlin, who's our points leader, get a victory? Or will somebody below 16th place in the points, like a Kurt Busch or Bubba Wallace or an Eric Amarola, put themselves in position to the playoffs with a victory? Because they're way down in points. The clock's ticking, folks. Ten races to go. It's time to make it happen. So that's all I'm going to say. So subscribe, like, congrats to Kyle Larson on winning $1.1 million in the All-Star Race at Texas Motor Speedway. Hope you all enjoyed the All-Star Race. Hope you all enjoyed NASCAR on Fox's coverage for the 2021 season. And now it's NBC's turn, as I mentioned. Hope you all have a wonderful week. God bless you. And God bless America. Good night.